Hello, I'm Chris Greeley from Octane Audio, and I'm going to be showing you how to use the Behringer X32 very briefly and quickly and hopefully the best way possible. All right, first I want to go over the basic layout of the console with you. Basically, we have our channels. You can select your channel, and it changes what channel you're affecting. And so we will start with, this is your gain section. This is, this is how you turn up your input to the channel. Your 48 volt, phase flip, and low cut are all right here. You also have your dynamics control, which is your gate and compression, your EQ, your bus sends, your main bus assignments, and then over here you have your saving of the scenes and your assignments that are all custom assignments over here for whatever you want to do. And then in addition to that, you have your first 16 channels, your second 16 channels, your effects returns, and then your bus masters. This is your master section, and this has all the masters for everything. So this is your DCA masters, bus masters, more bus masters, and these are the bus master sends, not returns, and then your matrix masters, which you can have whatever you want assigned to whatever you want, wherever you want, however you want it. And then your main and your center are both at the end of the matrix masters, in case you're not able to find this one, which I couldn't for a couple days. So uh, we're going to be going over some basic functions. If we go to the home menu up here, and it shows us our home menu on the screen, you select channel one. On channel one, the first thing you want to do is make sure it's actually the input that you want. So we're going to run over here. We're going to go to config, which is over one. And then right here on your source under config, you can roll it up and down. That's going to show you what input is coming onto fader one. This is called soft patching. It's very easy and sometimes it's faster to do that. However, I would, would suggest always running a one-to-one, -one, which means one is one, two is two, three is three, four is four, and so on, and not get all mixed up in soft patching because it can just get really confusing and messy. All right, one of the weirdest things on this console is how to name your channels. I can't even believe they made it this way, but they did. And so, what you're gonna do is go to setup, and jump over to scribble strip. So under scribble strip, you can take channel one, it says channel one right here. You can choose a color for it. You can choose a picture for it. So you have a little smiley face guy or a kick drum or something stupid, whatever you want. And then you can, you can go to name and it has a, this really difficult, weird to use keyboard where you scroll through the keyboard and you press a button down when you find find the, uh, the thing you want. I guess it's just kind of like, you know, old Nintendo. One of the other things, since uh, we'll go back to the home menu here, is if you want to link a channel, it will always link them odd even as it should be. And it, either, whether you're select on channel one or channel two, it's going to link channel one and two together or three and four together. It doesn't matter. It will always be odd even. And there's just a button right here on the screen. It says link. All you do is push it down and it asks if you want to link it and then you hit yes, which is also the page select right button. All right, next we're going to be talking about DCAs, which is also a digital control amplifier, which is the weirdest thing. It it's, it's comes from VCA, which is a voltage control amplifier, which just controls the fader. So if you go to your group DCA one through eight, you can name it whatever you want. You can hold down the select button. When I hold the select button, it shows me what channels are assigned to that DCA. Now this DCA fader will control the volume of all the faders in the group relative to where they already are. Now this is not a motorized function. It's just a regular function, so you won't see anything, but however, if you are assigned to a DCA and your DCA is down or muted, you won't hear those channels. They won't be there. So, and it, you can just go in, name your DCAs, 
press select, you can see everything that's assigned there. And if you want to assign more things, just press more select buttons. If you want to unassign them, press them again. Pretty easy. Once you're done, you can see all the way across the whole console that whatever you assign to them, you can assign effects returns to them, you can assign everything. I, I like to use the DCAs, it's really great. It's just, you can have the entire console in eight faders and you're kind of submixing stuff over here and it's just DCAs and VCAs are very, very useful function and I would encourage you using it. Bus assignments are similar to the DCAs except for the, it's not like a voltage control amplifier, it's actually a send. So if we look, you can select the bus. I selected bus one. It sends on fader. This shows me what we are sending to bus one. Now these are routing through here. Now this can be in addition to having something assigned to your stereo bus. Your buses can also be assigned to your stereo bus. So you can do parallel compression if you want. You can not assign channels to the stereo bus and only run them through the bus. And then you can put some compression on a group of things together. There's lots of things you can do with it. I would encourage you going and researching it if you want to use that feature. All right, so I know what you're thinking right now. You're probably thinking, how do I make an auxiliary happen? Well, this is how you do it. We have the buses are just buses no matter what. That means you can route things through them basically. They're, they sum mixes. So we are going to go to routing. We're going to go to out, 1 through 16 on your tab. You're going to take the output, whatever output, physical output you want. These are the physical outputs, whether it's on your S16 or on the back of the console. And you're going to assign them to whatever bus you want them to be. So right now, if we see, we have output 7 is assigned to mix bus 7. And so all you have to do, you'll turn up your mix bus, you'll make sure it's on, and it's already sending out of seven. Whatever you feed into bus seven is now sent out of that physical output, and it becomes an auxiliary at that point. All right, we're gonna talk about effects really quick. Over, if you're on your, on your DCA bus little guy here, your last four buses are your bus send masters. This is how it's set up on most out of the factory. And so this sends it into your effects. So if we go to effects, we go to home. These are your effect units right here. And you can scroll through all your units across the tabs and you see what you got. It's funny that they call compression effects. It's not really an effect, it's a dynamic. Anyway, home is where you're gonna see where everything is routed and which effect you're going to. So you can, you can change those out if you want to, and you can change your input source, you can change your type of reverb. There's all sorts of things you can do. You can look into the manual if you wanna learn, learn how to do that, or you can look online, or you know, it's something you're gonna to have to experiment with to figure out what you like. And then right here are your effects returns. Now you'll notice there are two because they're all stereo. They're mono in, stereo out. And so effect one left and right. And you can assign these to your DCAs. And we have verb and delay DCA, so you don't have to go hunting through all these pages to get to those. But if your effects aren't working, it's usually because they're either not sending in or they're not coming back. So let's say you want to send your left or right out to the foyer or the cry room or or something and have its own independent volume control. You're gonna to wanna to send that out of a matrix. What a matrix is, is a bus off of a master because technically you can't assign your left right output to an auxiliary because that's already a summing group. So your master summing group can be sent out of a matrix because a matrix is a bus off of a master. All you have to do to do that is you select your master and then you go over here, your bus sends now become matrix sends. So one through six, as you can see, three and four, or uh, seven and eight are not lit up. So you only have one through six, and all you have to do is turn it up here, and it's now sending out of that matrix. So out of matrix one, we are now sending left and right as a summed mono group. And so, so on and so forth through the whole thing, you can do that off of your buses and 
your center as well. All right, and last thing you're gonna wanna do is be able to save your scenes on the console. And so you're gonna go to where it says scenes, you're gonna hit view, you're gonna jump over to the scenes. You can scroll down and it says save and load. So if you wanna save it, you're gonna hit save. You can name it and then hit save again. If you want to load it, you just go to the one you want and you hit it and it loads it. Pretty easy. So that is a brief overview on how to use your X32 in an everyday, easygoing environment. If you want to learn more, you can uh, go look it up on YouTube. There's lots of very over informative videos about the X32. So you can go watch those and get everything you want. All right. Talk to you later.